The fact that mathematics does such a good job of describing the universe is a mystery that we don't understand, and a debt that we will probably never be able to repay. When you are face to face with a difficulty, you are up against a discovery. In physical science, a first essential step in the direction of learning any subject is to find principles of numerical reckoning and practicable methods for measuring some quality connected with it. I often say that when you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. It may be the beginning of knowledge, but you have scarcely in your thoughts advanced to the stage of science, whatever the matter may be. The more thoroughly I conduct scientific research, the more I believe that science excludes atheism. Fourier is a mathematical poem. I believe that the more thoroughly science is studied, the further does it take us from anything comparable to atheism. Large increases in cost with questionable increases in performance can be tolerated only in racehorses and fancy women. Overwhelmingly strong proofs of intelligent and benevolent design lie around us. The atheistic idea is so nonsensical that I cannot put it into words. Mathematics is the only true metaphysics. If you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. Questions of personal priority, however interesting they may be to the persons concerned, sink into insignificance in the prospect of any gain of deeper insight into the secrets of nature. Do not imagine that mathematics is harsh and crabbed and repulsive to common sense. It is merely the etherealization of common sense. We only know God in his works, but we are forced by science to admit and to believe with absolute confidence in a directive power, in an influence other than physical or dynamical or electrical forces. Heavier-than-air flying machines are impossible. I can never satisfy myself until I can make a mechanical model of a thing. If I can make a mechanical model, I can understand it. As long as I cannot make a mechanical model all the way through, I cannot understand. Accurate and minute measurement seems to the non-scientific imagination a less lofty and dignified work than looking for something new. But nearly all the grandest discoveries of science have been but the rewards of accurate measurement and patient, long-continued labor in the minute sifting of numerical results. Let nobody be afraid of true freedom of thought. Let us be free in thought and criticism. But with freedom, we are bound to come to the conclusion that science is not antagonistic to religion, but a help to it. We all confidently believe 
that there are at present, and have been from time immemorial, many worlds of life besides our own. This may seem wild and visionary. All I maintain is that it is not unscientific. There is nothing in science which teaches the origin of anything at all. The only census of the senses, so far as I am aware, that ever before made them more than five was the Irishman's reckoning of seven senses. I presume the Irishman's seventh sense was common sense, and I believe that the possession of that virtue by my countrymen, I speak as an Irishman. I need scarcely say that the beginning and maintenance of life on earth is absolutely and infinitely beyond the range of all sound speculation in dynamical science. The only contribution of dynamics to theoretical biology is absolute negation of automatic commencement or automatic maintenance of life.